Okay, hello, good evening everyone and welcome to my Instagram live uh, on Tuesday where I talk about the beauty world from the beauty therapist perspective. So, for you who don't know me just yet, uh, my name is Joanna Bojarska and I'm a professional beauty therapist and the founder of Beauty uh, by Joanna. Uh, if you would like to hear and see what I'm doing and what kind of services I'm offering and uh, what the kind of collaborations I am doing, uh, then you you can uh, go on my website and the website uh, address is www.joannabojarska.com uh, uh, so you can find all the information uh, there about me and yes what I am doing so uh, tonight's subject is the Q&A session basically so I was gathering uh, all the questions which you were asking me uh, in the past few weeks although you are a little bit shy with asking questions here in the in the comment section uh, usually I'm getting quite a few DMs after my life and um, sort of what uh, people are asking me lots of questions which program which products will be would be good or what kind of treatments that would be great to introduce today um, to their uh, beauty studio uh, so yes don't be shy you can ask uh, questions here as well but I don't mind either way so I've gathered the most common questions which you were asking me. So I have around 15 questions, but obviously if you have some uh, questions during the, uh, my life here tonight, you can also add them and ask them here. Uh, so let's start with the question number one. I have my little notes here with the questions. So the question number one is, what is your uh, go-to moisturizer? And I get this question asked a lot. So my favorite moisturizer well basically I am a beauty therapist so I am uh, trying testing new products all the time and uh, so I go through quite a few different moisturizers over the year and um, I will get for example I will get a new moisturizer I will give it a try for like a good three weeks but if it didn't impress me enough uh, I will probably pass it on or use it on some other um, parts of my body than my face yes so I'm going through quite a lot of moisturizers uh, because I feel like it's good to um, it's good to try as many things as I can uh, for you guys and then be able to tell you more about those things how they work with the skin uh, and my skin is a combination skin uh, with very oily t-zone and quite a greasy um uh, quite greasy t-zone oily t-zone and a little bit of sensitive cheeks and uh, a bit around uh, my area it's quite sensitive as well so this is my skin yes uh, so what i look in a moisturizer is definitely lightweight moisturizer but moisturizer will give which will give me good hydration to the skin so my go-to moisturizer although I check quite a lot as I said I try quite a lot it's what I will be always going to is definitely LME's uh, Pro Collagen Marine Cream I love this cream it's really soothing hydrating it firms the skin it gives you that elasticity to the skin and uh, makeup goes on this moisturizer very nicely after so I would really, really like I really like this moisturizer I don't have it now to show it to you because I'm try I'm using a different moisturizer now so my second moisturizer which I really like on the daily basis and I'm going back to it quite often it will be that Tulusara Renew uh, Morning Cream. Uh, it has turmeric extract inside. It's very nice, brightening, soothing to the skin. Uh, and uh, I really like it. It's a very light uh, formula as well. This is my cream, so I will dip my finger inside. I don't tend to do that too much. So it has a very light uh, formula. It goes directly into the skin and it really sinks in um, quite, uh, uh, quite quickly. So I don't like too rich formulas on my skin, um, as I said, because it's combination. Um, okay, and now I will be trying new uh, company as well. I, so I will give you my thoughts on a Kate Somerville pretty soon. I've ordered quite a few different things, so I will be trying the whole line and we will see how it goes. I've heard loads of good, great opinions about it, uh, so I cannot wait to, uh, to try it. Okay, uh, second question is, Actually, there's the lady who put the post. I have really enjoyed your last live stream with the guest. 
So I guess this is about the Facebook live stream. Are you planning on inviting more specialists on uh, to your lives in the future? So first of all, thank you very much. I um, I really uh, I'm, I love to hear your feedback, and especially it makes me uh, really happy when you are enjoying my live streams and you find them uh, worth watching. So thank you very much uh, for for this comment. And uh, the answer to your question is yes, definitely. I will be uh, bringing more special to my live streams because I think it's great to introduce you to uh, people who are specializing in different areas and obviously I am not covering all the areas in the beauty world so it's great if you can hear from uh, other specialists what, the, what they think in the certain subject. So yes, definitely there will be more guests appearing on my, uh, on my uh, channel uh, here on Fa or on Facebook as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, okay, the question number three is, uh, which toner would you recommend to, for the very sensitive skin, atopic skin? So definitely uh, when it comes to the toner and the, and the sensitive skin, I would definitely avoid things like toners with alcohols inside. Uh, I would probably avoid uh, very like heavy fragranced, uh, treat, uh, fragranced uh, products in general when you have a sensitive skin and I would definitely uh, wouldn't um, wouldn't use anything with like um, heavy AJ, AJs or BAJs inside of them in the toner. I was showing you the exfoliating things uh, for last night on my Facebook live stream. Uh, so for example, for the sensitive atopic skin, I wouldn't probably go... Uh, I wouldn't probably go with this Ren and um, Ready Steady Glow Toner because that might be a little bit too much for the sensitive atopic skin. But you might go ahead with this, for example, uh, exfoliant from Aveda, which I was showing you to, uh, last night. Uh, but the things which I would go for in the toner, if I would have a sensitive atopic skin, uh, those are things which will be more soothing, more calming for the skin, hydrating. So things with hyaluronic acid, stem cells would be very good for you. Niacinamide will be a perfect active ingredient for, active ingredient for for you um, but when it comes to toner I would probably go for something like rose water which will have very calming soothing properties for the, for your skin so that will be rose water would be a good thing uh, to look at in the toner or like those hydrating essences which they will be having like aloe vera arnica inside those kind of uh, active ingredients those those are the ingredients which you will be looking for um, when you're looking for the toner for the sensitive atopic skin, but definitely nothing too much with too much fragrance or uh, to like uh, no alcohols either. Okay. Um, all right. So then we have um, another one. Another question is, what is your favorite massaging tour, uh, tool uh, for at home massage? So uh, last week I was showing you uh, quite a few different massaging tools which you can use as a part of a natural beauty treatment and when it comes to massaging tools I like them, I have quite a lot quite a lot of them but I don't use them on the daily basis so you can get yourself massaging tools for example for home from let's say 10 pounds up to 300 pounds yes uh, with that electro stimulation and uh, radio frequency and things like that um, the question is are you gonna use it because it's I always uh, I always compare it to the uh, gym equipment yes uh, let's say you are getting on on that gym journey you know and uh, you're getting yourself this like super treadmill yes and then you ending up using this for like three four weeks every night every time everything is great and then after three four weeks you all of a sudden like like putting it on the side not using it anymore and things like this that's why people go to the gym and that's why people go to the beauty therapist as well because this is totally different experience yes so 
is it uh, is it worth for you to uh, invest this like 300 pounds in a massaging tool and then use it for two three weeks uh, and that's it and then leave it on the side or is it better to maybe get yourself something slightly cheaper and then book yourself a massage a proper massage with the beauty therapist on the regular basis and you can actually relax there and have totally different uh, 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 um, experience altogether so the choice is obviously yours if you have a motivation to use this kind of uh, massage tools on the daily basis then why not invest in them but I know myself uh, that I would probably use it for like few weeks and then like be like oh yeah so I am a beauty therapist I am doing loads of massages and to be honest uh, apart from those two which I will show you I'm using mainly my hands to massage my my face so that's what i'm using and uh, i would rather invest in a good oil or some kind of serum and then use my hands with it but this is my personal choice i mean all the answers to those questions would be my obviously personal opinion so you might not agree with it and that's um, that's obviously your right to do so but for me i i don't feel ill them i don't see the biggest chain um uh, the biggest sort of purpose in buying that very very expensive massage tools so the two tools which I am using on the daily basis which I actually find very easy and very simple are those two so first of all first of all a jade roller which I keep in the fridge I talk about jade rollers quite often they cost about 10 pounds 15 pounds uh, and they are great thing to have at home you keep them in the fridge and you can just take it out of you don't have to even keep them in the fridge because look this, that wasn't in the fridge and it's still cold because the stone has that purposes that it's it keeps them cold so and i would just do my massage uh, great for the puffing the skin you can massage your uh, skin care with it you can massage over the mask uh, you can massage on your bare face great tool easy to use just remember to disinfect it because although it's a stone it has pores in it so obviously a disinfection will be good so spray it with something or just wash it uh, just before you use it on your skin okay so jade roller is my definitely go-to tool to have at home for the massage for my personal use and then i also show you the foreo device and the newest foreo device has this the like, luna 3 it has those like this uh, cleansing part yes which you are cleansing your skin with and then it has those um, ridges at the back and obviously with this tool it you can you can cleanse your skin but you can also do the massage and i am using this quite often to be honest uh, because it vibrates uh, and basically you after you cleanse your skin you put some oil on your face or the serum and you are just following the movements with the lady on the phone application is showing you so it's like you don't it's brain like you don't have to use too much of your like initiative you just follow the movements with the lady which the lady is showing you there mm, so yeah so i find it very easy and actually i think when i was doing like religiously those massages for like three weeks every single night with the serum on uh, whatever serum i was applying i was actually seeing much bigger difference than i would be just like you know slapping the 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 uh, the serum on my face when i was using this massage tool so really nice i would definitely uh, recommend uh, using this kind of tool um, the Foreo one is great and you can use them in both sides yes so this is a great uh, thing to add as well so yes yeah, so those two are my go-to when it comes to at home face massage okay then the next question is um what is the best acne treatment at your beauty studio um so uh, basically uh, there is no one magical treatment for acne uh, when i see per people with uh, acne skin and they coming to my uh, to my beauty studio and my, as my clients i always tell them it's gonna be a journey it's that you can't just do one treatment and expect miracles to happen because they won't happen you your skin will look slightly better and balanced but uh, your acne is not gonna uh, disappear after one treatment uh, at the beauty studio yes 
so we usually start with the very thorough consultation we go uh, we will go and um, pick your proper skincare routine just to make sure that you are not over stripping no not over drying that skin to begin with getting the skin in a balanced situation and once we have it balanced then we can start working on your skin maybe a clean, deep cleansing treatment maybe an acid uh, sort of um, session of different treatments with acids and and things like this but it's never one of treatment uh, to begin with when i am treating acne and obviously as usual it always depends what caused this acne is it hormonal is it um, mature skin acne is it stress related acne so different approaches to different kinds of acne as well so there is no one magical treatment but if I would have to choose something and I give you the answer for it I would probably go for a deep cleansing treatment um, and uh, maybe a little swipe of a uh, very light acid like lactic acid maybe uh, so yeah so to begin with yeah as a first of treatment but um, I am just you know shooting here like so like uh, different ideas because I haven't seen your face so I would probably have to see your face first okay uh, what kind of serum uh, would you recommend for the dry and sensitive skin 30 plus so um, in order to your because it's dry and it's sensitive yes so in order to reduce the sensitivity in your skin you first to have to uh, balance the hydration levels in your skin and once you're gonna balance the hydration levels the lipid barrier will start to rebuild itself yes and then uh, obviously you will see low, less uh, like the reduced amount of sensitivity in your skin yes so it's like a domino effect so once once you get one thing in the right place then the other things will follow so I would definitely start with uh, balancing the hydration levels in your skin and then obviously sensitivity will reduce by itself and the things which you want to look at when it comes to sensitive dry and 30 plus skin is definitely niacinamide this is a great active ingredient for this kind of ex uh, for this kind of skin because it will reduce that sensitivity it will rebuild the bar uh, lipid barrier plus uh, it will um, work anti-aging sort of because you are 30 plus so you will have those first signs uh, and then uh, i would probably look for something with hyaluronic acid but those like multi-levels um, uh, composites of hyaluronic acid in your sebum serum and then i would probably look as well for something a little bit with collagen maybe uh, collagen is great to boost your elasticity in the skin and to boost the uh, collagen production yes so the, those kind of ingredients uh, I would be uh, looking at to begin with okay and then um, and then what do you think about radio frequency treatment does it actually works so my answer is yes, yes, yes. Radio, radio frequency is an amazing treatment, amazing treatment, non-invasive aesthetic treatment. Uh, it's a painless treatment. Uh, you have beautiful effects after it. There is no downtime apart that you have to drink loads of water because obviously collagen uh, likes water. So the more water you drink, the better effects you're gonna get. Uh, radio, what radio frequency does it basically let's think about our uh, collagen fibers because obviously radio frequency will boost the collagen fibers product uh, collagen fibers and elasticity and also hyaluronic acid to give you the sculpt uh, firmed and lifted skin appearance so let's think about it like this collagen fibers are like springs yes and when we are young they are obviously nice and tight but with the age they start to loosen up yes and then when we see that's when we see this gravity working down a little bit in our skin so what radio frequency does it we are using the heat to stimulate that tissue to get those uh, collagen fibers to get to that spring that tight spring when it was when we were young yes so this is what radio frequency does but obviously because the collagen fibers are quite stubborn ones we have to go with few sessions of radio frequency so definitely if you have your frequency done for the first time uh, you would be probably recommended a series of those treatments and then 
then probably the treatments to top up the effect um, in between. Uh, so uh, yes, radio frequency at my beauty studio, I'm sending it as a course of the treatments, not as a one-off treatment. It will give you some kind of a difference, but the difference won't be lasting very long. And then what radio frequency does and what those radio, radio uh, frequency waves are doing, they actually working in your skin up to four, six weeks after. So the effect will be to the gradually better and better and better so i think it's an amazing treatment uh it sells really nicely in my beauty studio because the ladies they can see the genuine difference in their skin appearance lifting and sculpting the, the, their faces but not only the faces for your belly tights those like little wings here lovely treatment as well to firm it like suck it in sort of you know um and make it more firm and uh yes all 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 the good benefits of radio frequency so definitely a great treatment to try uh okay what is uh what is the average number of the treatments when your clients are doing a full beauty program with you so how does it work with me it really depends what they will be um sort of uh they will be willing to do yes yeah? so sometimes i have clients who want uh, miracles after one treatment obviously i will try i will do my best um to deliver but it not always happens i can't really do miracles uh, over one over one visit but i always do my my best and um, how does it usually do on the average with my clients is they coming for the first treatment it's usually a consultation and we will do a little trial um, facial uh, just I just have to uh, get to know their skin and there's how it reacts underneath my fingers and how it responds to the products which I am using so this first treatment it's to sort of like get to know each other um, treatment and then uh, we will do we will do probably a deep cleansing treatment later like microdermabrasion let's say yes this is a very popular treatment and then we will also do uh, and then we will do a course of the treatments which are targeting a cer certain concern so we were talking about radio frequency so if the, my lady's main concern um, or gentleman main concern is that saggy loose skin I would probably do a deep cleanse and then three or four treatments of radio frequency frequency so usually it's about six treatments which we are doing um, at the beginning of our journey and then obviously we are doing um, uh, regular treatments like every six maybe eight weeks um, uh, and they coming back in this kind of time so that's how it works with me okay what is your favorite treatment which makes you look so young <laughs> Thank you very much. I know who asked this, but I'm not going to be giving a names here because I I told you that I'm going to keep you anonymous here. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I am trying. I'm trying. It's not only one treatment. Obviously, it doesn't happen by itself. My skin is very fussy. Uh, if I would leave my skin uh, without any attention for like a few weeks, it will like, yeah, it will play up. I will have loads of blemishes and and yes uh, clogged pores and everything so i have to take care of my skin on the regular basis like really take care of my skin but my favorite treatment for myself it's um de depends obviously on the season but my favorite treatment is definitely good chemical peel and mesotherapy and I do not need all mesotherapy for myself because chemical peel, what it does, it really will turn, speed the turnover uh, of the cells in my skin. It will remove, remove the dead cell layers and really um, rebalance everything in my skin. And then I will go with those active vitamin cocktails and a mesotherapy just to boost uh, the hyaluronic acid or let's say vitamin E or vitamin C in my skin. So, so yeah, those two definitely are my favorite ones for myself okay and then next question is what uh 
what would be your top favorite serum for the mature skin um 60 plus and this is for my mom and then for me well i don't know what skin you have but i guess if your mom is 60 plus you are probably like 30 plus yeah so let's let's assume it's this in is this situation so uh, for the mature skin for the ladies like 60 plus um i have quite a lot of these ladies at my beauty studio definitely first thing which you want to go with are peptide uh, peptides and stem cells those two active ingredients will work wonders on your skin and um, to rebuild this um to rebuild the skin to make those fine lines and wrinkles less visible so definitely peptides and stem cells will be the way to go with the mature skin i would be uh, a bit more uh, careful with using very like heavy acids or heavy chemical pills although they are great as well but obviously they have to be done in a controlled environment uh, but like lactic acid as azelaic acid it's always good to use on the mature skin just to brighten up the skin smooth the texture of the skin but if you go for the serum definitely something with peptides and stem cells that will be the way to go and obviously hyaluronic acid but hyaluronic acid is above everything it's good for everyone uh, and then for you so you will have the uh, 30 plus face uh, sorry complexion and obviously I don't know what concern you are dealing with but let's say on average for people who are uh, 30 plus the serum which I would go for I would probably start introducing something with color and um, retinol uh, light retinol will be good because that will give you that anti-aging effect uh, as well uh, vitamin c will be great uh, for people 30 plus as well something with good vitamin c uh, inside so yeah those kind of and maybe some stem cells as well to rebuild your skin so yeah definitely like uh, collagen retinol um, and then and then maybe like vitamin c that's that's what kind of uh, what kind of serum i would be looking uh, for if i would be like let's say normal skin 30 plus okay uh, all right next question what do you think about botox and filler treatments will you be ever doing them at your beauty studio okay so botox and fillers and um, i think if you have some kind of concerns or you are don't you don't feel good with yourself and you really need to change something do it do it if you feel like the traditional standard beauty treatments are not helping you enough and you are really annoyed with this like wrinkle here or here or something like this just do it and try it those things are not gonna stay with you forever they will stay like for a few months or so and and you see if you like the effect or not yes and if you go to a good specialist they will tell you what you need what you don't need and things like this so i i don't um i i don't i said like i will probably use those kind of treatments like botox or things but in the future when i feel the need for it at the moment i don't but i will tell you what i've done with myself as well because i'm i'm open about it there is nothing to hide here yes uh, so um my first visit at the uh, clinic like aesthetic clinic was actually uh, a year ago in june so this was my first uh, first visit as a as a patient uh, in at the clinic yes um, and I obviously chosen a clinic which I've done my research and everything I will be talking about it in a second and uh, I actually asked the girl what she would recommend me because I was I wanted to see uh, the opinion of the specialist and she said that I don't really need much uh, which was actually I was agreeing with it as well I mean um, you know I don't want to pack random like stuff to my face if i don't need to uh, so what i've done i've done my brows so they are tattooed so they are i have permanent makeup on them and then what i've done i've done a little bit of hyaluronic acid underneath my eyes because i have quite a dark circles uh like yes 
dark circles underneath my eyes and I was happy with it and then I also went for a little bit of hyaluronic acid in my uh, lips uh, and I went for a very small amount just to see how I'm gonna feel about it so I was really happy I'm really really happy with my brows I mean I'm over the moon I really like them they've changed my face and I think I, I am really comfortable with them I really like the underneath the eye uh, thingy as well although I've bruised a little bit so first two weeks weren't so joyful but after it was good and um, but with the lips I found that it's not for me I mm, the effect wasn't really um, like that spectacular and I didn't feel like myself uh, so I had people who were telling me yeah you look brilliant and I had people who were telling me like mm, not really Joanna I don't think you look so great uh, but the the overall effect wasn't as satisfying so i don't think i will ever have it done again and but you know i've tried it uh why not just for an experience uh, and yeah so if you feel like you need to then why not try it and see how you feel about it but what i wanted to um address here always do your research yes do not go to a random person. Uh, I've done my research uh, like quite a, for a, quite a long time uh, before I've chosen the clinic which I've chosen, and that was a clinic in Poland. Um, and yes, so I a few of my friends they've been there and they've been uh, they've been using their treatments and stuff like this, and they were happy. I some of my clients actually in England they've been there and they've been happy. So I thought yes, and I was really happy with this clinic. I went there, it was clean, it was hygienic, the girls were really professional, I got all the information which I needed, indications, contradictions, things like this. The girl who was doing my treatment, the owner of the clinic, she was really like really professional, she knew what she was doing. I didn't have any complications after so really if you do your research properly and if you go to a certified fully insured person you won't have any surprises after so what i want you to tell you what i want to tell you do not go for those crazy promotions yes because let's say botox normally costs 250 and then someone is doing it for 120 something you know i would say it would be a lot an alert for me that something might not be that good there you know and um, so i don't go for those like crazy promotions uh, which i see on facebook or whatever and i'm not saying they are bad obviously you can go uh, for those promotions but always be a bit more conscious and always go to the person who is fully certified fully insured and uh, yes and all has all those covers you should be always um, uh, be offered a consultation to begin with without any obligations as well so those are the things which you would be looking for and uh, yes always do your research and do not go to those random people who are doing like botoxes and fillers on the sofa somewhere in someone's house i mean I mean, of course, the choice is yours at the end, but I personally wouldn't go um, to this kind of places. And then another thing is, uh, if you are, uh, if you were asking if I will ever uh, be able, uh, with, uh, if I will ever do it, um, I don't know. I, it might be an option, but not definitely not in the near future, uh, because I don't think I am knowledgeable enough to do this kind of treatments. If I would probably have my own clinic, I would rather have a collaboration with something like a nurse or a doctor uh, who are fully qualified to do this kind of treatments. Um, I don't think I am knowledgeable enough to do this kind of treatments, so I am not doing them at the moment, but I don't know, maybe in the future I will do another school and I will start doing them, but uh, for now, no. Okay, next question is, uh, what would you recommend for the acne caused by stress? So, funny enough, people are coming to me, the main concern is not like aging, breakouts, uh, dry skin, sensitive skin, it's stress. Most of my clients are coming to me and saying like, Joanna, I had such a stressful week, just do something, just I need some relax and things like this. And loads of people are suffering with acne caused by stress now you can see it especially there are two camps now for people sitting at home dehydrated skin 
or freaking out skin. You have loads of blemishes, redness and things like this. Yes. So you can see that people by the, like, you know, the, uh, the, the level of stress rise, right, raised a little bit and then your, their skin. acne and it can cause the acne so this is the fact uh, the you know the clinical fact so um definitely if you if you are uh, suffering from the acne cause stress uh, stre uh, acne is caused by stress definitely uh, try to uh, step back a little bit from all your skincare which you're using because you're probably over drying stripping that skin because you want to get rid of it first of all start from inside so what i would do definitely if you not now but if you go to work normally go for a walk in the park just try to breathe with fresh air oxygenate your body a lot that will help now you have this you know these exercises outside so you can use this time to really oxygenate the cells in your body then definitely start with good nutrition i know it's obvious what i'm saying but what you eat it really can you know cause all this inflammation and even uh, unbalance your hormones even more so definitely nutrition will be a way to go and then obviously your skincare so first of all step back rebuild your lipid barrier in your skin um, start to nourish uh, start to moisturize the skin first and then uh, if you do those kind of things uh, you should be releasing slowly then a uh, lot of my clients although they're suffering with the acne on their face they are booking themselves regular massages for example like a scalp massage or food massage or back massage to release the stress levels in their body so that can actually help as well any kind of meditation yoga this kind of things which they will be really decreasing the stress in your body because i know the easiest way to be to say oh just remove the stress from your life yes but unfortunately we can't work is stressful life is stressful yes so so we have to do what we can in order to release those levels of stress in our life so that would be definitely what the way to go with this kind of problem okay and then facial oils how to choose the right one for your skin type I mean, guys, I have loads of questions about serums and facial oils. So I think I will get, do a separate videos on my live streams about separate about just serums and just facial oils, because those are very big subjects to cover. So I will try to touch on it a little bit uh, briefly. So basically facial oils, um, you have different oil. We are using oils in a different purposes in our uh, skincare. Yes, so you can have those cleansing oils which you are removing your makeup with and then you have this um, then you have this uh, uh, treatment oils so for example you because oils are very good carrier for the active ingredients so you, ha you can have a treatment oil with retinol or with uh, or with uh, let's say uh, BHA let's say yes um, so they are they will be good carriers for it but um, then we have uh, the thing which we probably think about when we think about oils are those like soothing hydrating oils which we put on our faces and um, if you would ask someone about facial oil about 10 years ago or 15 years ago people would be like what facial oils are we are using only for massage yes and people would know things like sunflower oil linen oil or uh, maybe a, a olive oil yes but then it was that big boom of facial oils and everyone started using it and i think the, the, the that is point when the uh, oils were started to be so popular was the argan oil because argan oil um, was that golden elixir when uh, it was great for any skin type it was great for oily skin it is i mean it was it is it is great for oily skin it was it is great for a dry skin it is great for our hair as well so this argan oil became very very popular and then people started to use more and more and more oils in their in their day-to-day -day skincare routine and obviously uh, then we went a little bit too much and now people are like just pouring oils everywhere on their on their bodies i think there are some oils which i would 
personally uh, avoid when it comes to your skin like coconut oil mm, i think it's a bit too comedogenic uh, it's a bit too uh, heavy on the skin on your face great for your body uh, great for your hair as well and um, i'm i'm talking now about like pure raw coconut oil because in the in conjunction in conjunction with something else obviously it has different purposes but on like as as on its own i would probably uh, avoid using like pure your coconut raw oil on its own on their face i know there will be people who are using it and they think that this is the best moisturizer ever yes go ahead you do you as i said i wouldn't personally recommend to use it on the skin and then obviously um we have after this argan oil we started to have loads of different oils and i'm asking i'm um, getting questions which oil for which skin type so that's why i thought i will do a separate video on it but let's just touch on the most um most common ones so with the oils what happening is you have this uh, linoleic acid and oleic acid so it depends on what kind of uh, ratio they are being combined in the facial oil that's how they will work so the more linoleic acid you have in your facial oil the more lightweight will be and the more like oily or combination skin will be able to um, sort of agree with it yes more oleic acid then it will be more like for those dry skins yeah so it that makes sense and then that's how you basically are choosing uh, those kind of oils uh, the compare on those um on those like ratios of this um acids there yeah um, and what are the most uh, popular ones at the moment definitely rose hip oil um this is like a natural alternative for retinol that is what everyone is saying great for anti-aging because it really like smooth the texture smooths the textures of the skin speeds up the cells turnover and um, so it's a very good oil and uh, then you obviously have hemp seed oil uh, which we were actually talking with anna last monday on facebook live stream and uh, that cbd oil uh, it has its boom at the moment on the market it's very popular great for people with sensitive skin and acne skin because it's really great with like a soothing and balancing sebum production cleansing the pores and um, working as an anti-acne and um, uh, active ingredient and then we have jojoba oil which is actually a wax ester and jojoba oil is great and everyone loves jojoba oil because uh, the jojoba oil weight uh, is similar to our sebum so what it does it it can draw on those impurities from the oil so oil cleans oil sort of this kind of um, uh, form, formula here uh, and jojoba oil is really great it agrees with loads of different skin types so that's why loads of people loves jojoba oil and then we have plenty different ones like uh, raspberry seed oil we have I actually brought a few here uh, to show you like raspberry seed oil uh, which is great for sensitive skin and then we have uh, the uh, strawberry seeds oil which is great for mature skin yes and then we have a chia seed oil great for the um, oily skin and congested skin and then you have like mixture of different oils in the serums so this is one of my favorite one the Sarah Chapman over overnight facial uh, so you have your vitamin e you have a uh, rose hip uh, oil here and the consume q10 q10 so loads of different uh, good oils inside and then you have my obviously beloved uh, tulsara radiant oleation oil which i was actually mentioning uh, during uh, when i was showing you my auto face massage um, about this oil so it's a mixture of six different oils inside great oil to use so as i said i will do a separate video on the oils itself when i will be actually in, um, uh, explaining every single uh, part uh, like uh, divide them in this different categories of oils which we are using in our skincare and then i will be obviously uh, telling you which ones are good for which 
skin type and because I get loads of questions about those oils. Okay, next one. We are on the now 14, so two to go. I think we will be able to finish in time. Okay, so can you recommend any product for the everyday use for sensitive skin with dark spots? Maybe some treatments. So sensitive skin and dark spots, it depends on what kind of dark spot, what caused those dark spots. Was it hormonal? Was it sun damage? Uh, was, are those the mature dark spots? So it depends on what we what kind of dark spots we are talking about. But definitely when you have hyperpigmentation and sensitive skin, SPF. SPF is the most uh, most uh, important thing for you because you have to protect that skin. It's sensitive and you know it's already tends it tends to get those hyperpigmentation spots. So you need to definitely cover yourself with loads of SPF. And if you have sensitive skin, I would rather go for mineral SPF over the chemical because it will probably uh, gives you less irritation. You will have less chances of irritation your skin than with the chemical one. Um, and then if you have sensitive skin and then hyperpigmentation, I would probably start with uh, getting, uh, you know, getting the sensitivity balance. So something with hyaluronic acid, again, niacinamide is a great active it goes really well with the sensitive skin and hyperpigmented skin and once is this the sensitivity will calm down and you will balance your skin and rebuild that lipid barrier of your skin then you can go uh, ahead and start maybe on some light uh, acid treatments um, but I would go for a professional course of the treatments uh, probably then doing it uh, yourself at home because it might not uh, end up as great as you would like it to so so yes definitely first try to uh, calm down the sensitivity on your in your skin and then maybe introduce some acid treatments but SPF definitely SPF to go with and my last question is uh, for tonight is what is your favorite treatment to do on your clients all of them <laughs> I love to do all the treatments but obviously I specialize in facials and I think my favorite facial to do is um, microdermabrasion with ultrasounds why because uh, it it gives you instant results and you can see the difference in your client's skin and clients can see the difference even after one treatment. And I've done a separate video on microdermabrasion actually um, a few weeks back. Everything is uploaded on YouTube so you can check it out there um, and just go microdermabrasion and it will show you a few different uh, probably options of videos. But the most recent one was a few weeks ago on Instagram and uh, microdermabrasion because it gives you that exfoliation that deep exfoliation uh, on the skin and then obviously you are packing uh, the skin in with the active ingredients with ultrasound so uh, this combo always work wonder works wonders and clients can see the effect straight away so this is probably my favorite one to do because actually i can see the difference and the clients can see the difference uh, straight away and there is no downtime to this treatment either so you don't have to have like many restrictions after so this is this is probably one of my favorite treatments okay guys we went as i could and uh, as i said i will be doing a separate video on serums and on uh, on the facial oils in a few weeks time uh, as you can see we are probably not going back to work until on the 4th of july the earliest Let's hope this date will be the final date and uh, I hope uh, everything will be back to normal by then. I mean, new normal, but let's say, yes, uh, back to some kind of normality. Uh, and yes, and we will be able to go back to work. And so um, if you have any more questions, any any other questions, please ask them either here in the comment section or uh, DM me after or send me an email, as I said. And yes, and I'm always here to help you. Uh, and I can, I will try to answer all your questions. If I can't, uh, if I don't know the answer, then I will be, I will be looking and contacting other specialists to help me with the answer okay guys thank you very much for tonight 
enjoy your evening and i will see you next week either here or you may if you want you can always join me on monday as well facebook and 7 p.m as well as here thank you very much for joining me and now i wish you a very nice evening and i will see you next week bye